Attach the joint onto a vise. Ensure that it is secured and tight. Make sure that the nut in the back is loose. Loosen all of the cap screws. Note that the two bottom cap screws are longer than the rest because of the elongated portion of the end cap. Hold the end cap and remove the last cap screw. Check and ensure that the copper gasket is in place. At this point, roll the end cap over. Unscrew the nut and the lock washer and set them aside. Remove the siphon collet. Attach the siphon tube on the vise. Apply a small amount of pipe dope or anti-seize on the threads. Install the siphon collet. Take a long screwdriver and insert it through the condensate ports. This will eventually line up the notch in the back, even with the siphon tube. Note that the siphon tube is inserted into the threads. However, it will be held in place by the wedge shape of the collet. This is the procedure for assembling the entire joint and siphon as a single unit. If it is not possible to insert the assembled siphon pipe into the roll, the siphon and the joint may be required to be installed separately. We will need to make some notches as a reference point to establish the correct 6 o'clock position of the siphon. Attach the housing on the vise. Insert the siphon tube along with the collet. Apply some grease on the o-ring. Mount the end cap. Install the washer and the lock nut. Screw the nut on with enough thread to hold in place. Ensure that the copper gasket is in the proper place. Using a screwdriver, ensure that the notch stays in line with the siphon tube. Tighten with the wrench to ensure that it will not move. Set the torque wrench to 60 foot-pounds and tighten the nut.
Then bend the tabs of the washer in the opposite direction. This will ensure that the nut holding the siphon collet will stay in position and the siphon will stay intact since the lock washer will prevent the bolt from loosening. There are two siphon adjustment cap screws. Remove the first one. Ensure that the second one is flush with the back of the end cap. Be sure that the two cap screws at 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock position are hand tight. Loosen the ones on the bottom and top. This will allow the siphon to pivot for adjustment purposes. With an Allen wrench, Tighten the set screw until it hits the back of the housing. Once the set screw hits the back of the housing, pull the Allen wrench out and reposition to 12 o'clock. Then turn a quarter turn and check the adjustment. This varies between one quarter inch to one half inch. This is the one and a half to a one and a quarter adapter. Typically, pipe dope would be applied on the threads. This would also have pipe dope on it. Tighten this end with a wrench. Push the flange all the way back to the housing. Place the split wedge in the groove. Ensure that they are in proper orientation. Wide end of the wedge facing towards the roll. Pull the flange around the split wedge and insert the snap ring behind the flange to secure in place. The assembly is now ready for installation on the machine. Here is the snap ring to keep the flange in place. Note that the pipe fitting for condensate removal has been attached while the joint was on the vise. This is the difference between the existing gasket and the gasket of the Dublin HPS. It is 66% wider, which means better sealing against the journal. Apply a small amount of grease on the back side of the gasket. This will hold the gasket in place. Install the joint assembly. Engage and tighten the flange bolts. 